Good morning and welcome to the Vine Community Church. You are really welcome here. Today we're going to worship God, we're going to hear uh, about the final part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit um, that we've been looking at and we're just going to have some good time in the Lord's presence. So I want to open in prayer and then we're going to move into a time of worship. Holy Spirit, wherever we are, we just ask that you make yourself known to us. You are welcome in this place. Help us to worship you, Lord. Help us to worship you as we sing, as we pray, as we move in the gifts. But most of all, help us to know your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together to worship. If you can stand, please do. Oh 
singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind
The final three gifts listed in this part of Corinthians are the ability or power gifts. They are the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the working of miracles. These gifts are given by the Holy Spirit to allow us to fulfill the commands of Jesus. We see in Luke it says, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And in Matthew it says, he sent them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, now freely give. In Matthew again it says, Jesus called the twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. It is really clear we are commanded to go into the world to speak about God, to tell the good news, but we're also commanded to heal the sick, see miracles performed, drive out demons, see sickness and disease go. These gifts are part of the way that the Holy Spirit uses us in that mission. So we'll start with the first thing, to, which is the gift of healings. And the first thing to notice is that it's healings, plural. 
If we look at the healings that Jesus performed, we'll see they take uh, a number of forms, from things being created when he mixed spit and mud and pushed them into the pushed it into the eyes of the man blind from birth and new eyes formed. Um, to the um, removal of things where scales dropped off people's eyes or sores disappeared, through to the, I ain't quite sure what happened there, such as the man that was healed, he was crippled, and Jesus said, get up, take your mat and walk. There are different types of healing, but this is supernatural healing of diseases and infirmities without any natural means at all. This gift is about miraculous manifestations of the Spirit of God healing human illness. It's not to be confused with medical or surgical or scientific ability, and and I do believe that God is the author of all of those things as well. This gift manifests often through the natural processes though. It's natural processes but often unnatural timescales such as broken bones that heal within two days between the first and the second x-ray instead of the six weeks that they should take. Supernatural healings through the gifts of healings are brought about by the power of Christ through the Spirit and not through human ability. The gifts work only according to faith. And another important thing is, <coughs> and another important thing is, the gift is a gift to the person being healed and not to the messenger. We talk about people being involved in healing. Some, yes, that some people do see more healings than others. Absolutely. God seems to work, work through them, but the gift of healing is on the sick person. You know, the gift of healings is used to deliver the sick and destroy the works of the devil in the human body. Mark 1.32. It's used to authorise the gospel message as preached by servants of God. Ephesians 1.11. It's used to authorise the message of the gospel. Acts 8.6-7. To draw people within earshot of the gospel to turn people to the gospel and to convince unbelievers of the truth of the word of God. Healing is split out from the other miracles, though it is definitely a miracle. You know, it's much easier to talk to people about the power of God when they've seen a friend healed or they've been healed themselves. I think that's why Jesus was really clear in his his instructions. Go out and tell the story, but as you do that, heal the sick, cast out demons, perform miracles. We seem to miss that. We seem to miss that in the church today. We've got the, we'll tell the good news. Well, we've told you the good news. Why have you not believed? Jesus gives us through this, these gifts, through the Holy Spirit, the wherewithal to see miraculous events happen. Not because of us, because of the Holy Spirit. But that paves the way to the gospel. And that's the second, uh, the second gift here, and that's the, the, the rest of the miracles. And let, let's just be clear what we mean by that. A miracle is a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature. It's a temporary suspension of the usual order, an interruption of the system of nature as we know it. You know, we can read in the Bible about rivers stopping, seas parting. They're not natural things. Or they don't happen naturally. Without God intervening, I should say. A miracle is a sovereign act of the Spirit of God, irrespective of the laws of, the, of, of nature and the systems that, that govern it. A miracle is not an undiscovered event. It's not something that has got some weird and long convoluted explanation. It is God changing the game for a moment in time. Because God is not bound by those natural laws. God acts as he wills within or outside of what we understand. And sometimes God uses us through the Holy Spirit to be part and parcel of that 
event. You know, if we look through through the Bible, there, there are miracles in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, there, are, there are miracles that see people taken out of the hands of enemies, that they see people provided for those that are in need. They see divine judgment and disciplines. They see miracles that deliver people from unavoidable situations of danger. We see people raised from the dead. All of that is to display God's power and magnificence. And I just want to tell you that that is not confined to the pages of the Bible. You know, we've got good friends, um, good friends in, in organizations uh, that, that have come and visited us, um, that uh, have spoken of their personal experience of seeing those things happen, of seeing provision for orphans in parts of Africa that's just miraculous. People arriving out of the blue and going, I don't know why I was told to bring this load of goods here, but I was told to bring it to here. I didn't even know you were here. We've seen people saved when they shouldn't have been saved. We've seen stories of people raised from the dead. And these are not a friend of a friend of a friend told us. These are people we know. Healings and miracles seem to go hand in hand with faith. And faith is a gift. It's the last of these gifts mentioned here. The gift of faith is a gift of the Spirit to us that we might receive miracles or through the Holy Spirit be involved in them. The gift of faith is miraculous and supernatural like all of the other gifts of the Spirit. The gift of faith is not something that we earn. It's not something that we build up to or save up for or, or work our way to or convince ourselves into. It is a supernatural gift. And it's distinct from the workings of miracles. They both produce miracles. You could draw a distinction between the gift of miracles and the gift of faith like this. Uh, and it is a poor artificial distinction. But it is helpful. The gift of miracles is very, is very active, it's very immediate, it's very short term. Um, the gift of miracles is we pray and a miracle happens there and then because the Holy Spirit gives that gift where the gift of faith is, is often more long-term. It's often more passive. It's often more faithful. Uh, Isaac's blessing was achieved by the gift of faith and it took nearly a lifetime to fulfill. You know, we often articulate uh, a lack of the manifestation of spiritual gifts as a lack of faith. As if we've got to sort of build up a bank of it before we can expend it. But that's not what it is. The gift of faith is exactly that, a gift that we are given. I do not believe for one moment that God gives us less than we need. I believe that we, that we as believers get these pneumaticon gifts, these gifts with a special character, because God is gracious and abundant. And I believe that we should demonstrate them, that they should be evident in our lives and amongst us. I believe because of that we will be given any and all of these gifts if we are willing and available so that when a gift is given to us, we can partner with the Holy Spirit to let it work out alongside our God-given abilities and talents and despite our frailties, to build up the church, to convince the unbeliever, and to bring glory to God. The choice of which gift we receive, whether it's one of the pneumaticon gifts, or it's a gift of serving or leadership, that's the decision of the Holy Spirit. But you know, the Holy Spirit's decision is not completely independent to that of our desires, and our humble, prayerful seeking. Corinthians tells us to earnestly desire the greater gifts, and especially prophecy. 
No, the sovereignty of God does not negate human responsibility. We are called to desire those gifts and to ask for them and to practice and foster those that we have. It could be the gifts that we've covered in this last three weeks. Or it could be the gifts elsewhere. Prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, mercy, being an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, miracles, different kinds of healing, helps, administration, tongues, evangelism, or a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of understanding, a spirit of counsel, a spirit of might, and the spirit of of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We're called to desire the gifts, the higher gifts, that we may build up, Christ, build up the body of Christ, convince the unbeliever, and bring glory to God. So I'm going to pray that over all of us. I pray, Lord, that we make ourselves available. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be sensitive to when you are moving. Help us to be available for you to use in the situations we are in. Let us make our talents and skills available to you. And we give thanks for those talents and skills that you've given. And Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray the most dangerous prayer now. Because I'm going to pray for each of us that you make the gifts of the Spirit available through us. Even those that we're unsure about. Those that we don't think we've got faith for. So I pray, Holy Spirit, give us that gift of faith that we may see miracles performed, that we may see healings in our own bodies and the people around us, that we may see supernatural events, that we may see even the raising of the dead, if that is your will for us to do. Make us wholly available. Lord, I'm reminded of that piece in Isaiah where Isaiah was, saw the vision and was asked, who will go for me? And Isaiah replied, I will go. Lord, for those of us in this prayer, for those of us that honestly can say those words, choose me, then we pray that you choose us. Release your gifts through us as you see fit. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's been great to have you with us. It'll be great to see you during the week. Next week we continue this series, moving on to look at the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Until then... I pray you know God's comfort, you know his strength, you know his wisdom through this week. Go, heal the sick, and speak the good news of Jesus into people's lives.